A few years ago, the stacks and chains were the subject of an Auburn University study requested by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. That study found evidence that horses on four-inch stacks can suffer tendinitis and hoof abnormalities, while 10-ounce chains can produce swelling and lesions within 10 days. Despite this, the Agriculture Department has not specifically prohibited these devices, and a federal court has upheld that decision. It's also legal to cut and brace a walking horse's tail to change its angle. They make one little cut right there, right? Right. And they put a scalpel in there, and they turn the blade and cut this muscle here, turn the blade, cut that muscle there, and then they put a brace to hold it this way. The horse must wear a heavy metal and leather tail brace like this one, which is often irritating to the horse. Now illegal training methods developed in past decades have included blistering the horse's legs with oil of mustard, gouging the ankles with jagged chains, lining the stacks with lead, and driving nails into the horse's hooves. Horse owner Bill Mussman. I remember a day and age when you, could, you looked at a Tennessee walking horse feet and you didn't see any hair from the first joint down to the hoof. It was just all scar tissue. That doesn't happen anymore. They say trainers condition the horse not to flinch during inspection. And you just touch her like that and she'll go, ding, ding. She'll shy away from it. It hurts. So you don't want to do that. You want her to stand there and take the pain. So you have somebody standing up by her head, either cranking her down with a stud chain, you know, in her mouth, a chain in her mouth, or, or a whip on her side or a board. But they'll either strike the horse in the head, or they'll strike the horse in the side. Meanwhile, yelling at it, stand up here, or, you know, be still, you know, or quit. That's called stewarding the horse. I think that got to me even worse than the soaring, the stewarding. It just, it was, it was really very difficult to stomach. Did this horse pass inspection? Yes, it did. Every time. Well, a couple times we were told to take it back to the stall and uh, steward him a little better. He was getting a little too obvious. In other words, the inspector told you to go back to the stall and teach your horse not to flinch? Yes. Making money for the trainers and the owners. And this is how we repay these horses. And Benefield says she received a threatening phone call telling her... ...tell me that I'd better back off. And if I didn't, the boys from Tennessee would be out here uh, to pay me a visit and that he would hate to see me get physically harmed. It's frightening. They are controlled by fear, intimidation, and threats. Helen Serhas says fear kept her silent a few years ago when a trainer soared and lamed her horse. I, I, I felt like if you, we had spoken out at this time that you might have found your horse dead. They intimidate you so. North Carolina stable owner Bill Williamson says despite threats, he testified last year against a walking horse owner who gouged and blistered his horse's legs. He even made verbal threats to my boarders, my son, and on the barn in general. This photo taken in North Carolina last year helped convict walking horse owner Dennis Cannell of animal cruelty. Local Animal Control Director, Diane Quisenberry. And you can see the scarring in the raw places. And we later found that he had mustard oil in his tack box and very heavy chains. Stable owner Bill Williamson turned Cannell in. He said he got his methods from a walking horse barn that he used to train at, where he worked. He said he was taught to do this. He said he was taught, that's correct. Uh, he really didn't think that what he was doing was wrong. 
And uh, at one point, I recall him saying, "You just don't understand how you're how uh, you're supposed to to uh, train Tennessee walking horses." Okay. To document soaring, Susan West and Tenny Mudge of the American Horse Protection Association say they took these pictures at public shows two years ago, even though U.S. Department of Agriculture employees warned them this was dangerous. We normally go together um, simply for safety reasons. We've been advised by um, by USDA people themselves that we should not go to loan, uh, go to shows alone, and that we should be very careful where we go with our cameras, especially during um, after dark hours. Three major sports in the South: um, college football, NASCAR, and Tennessee walking horses. It is the lifeblood of a lot of communities. Nathaniel Jackson is a breeder in Cookville who helped ABC News develop the story. He came to see McConnell enter his plea and push for awareness of abuse he says permeates the industry. The federal case against McConnell is based on abuse documented in this video. So the other 51 criminal counts developed from the undercover video were dropped in exchange for the plea. Prosecutors argued McConnell should get probation. I was surprised, I'll say that. Very surprised. David Howard, an organizer of the $41 million annual walking horse show in August, says most everyone in the industry expected McConnell to do hard time. While animal rights advocates say soaring is a common practice, Howard argues Tennessee's walking horse community is safe and humane. I'm telling you, you're never going to be able to eliminate everything in the industry. Why is that? Is it just because of the money that's at stake? It's the same thing in any sport. Why did Roger Clemens take drugs? I mean, people, some people are going to cheat. I know some of the officials in Shelbyville says, oh, it's not rampant and it's only isolated. No, sir. No, ma'am. It's not. But Jackson says the ABC report sheds light on one of Tennessee's ugly secrets, which has already led to many trainers and groomers coming forward to report the practice. He says it's fear and money that kept the silence. We needed something that grabbed the consciousness of the public and uh, demanded uh, an outrage response. Thank you, Paul. They denied it for months until their acts of horse abuse were shown to the world. We're talking about beating and soaring at a Tennessee walking horse farm. The graphic footage made national headlines last week when the Humane Society caught them in the act. It was all happening at a farm in Collierville, Tennessee. Today, Jackie McConnell and two of his employees pleaded guilty in federal court here in Chattanooga. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter John Cole Newland joins us all new at 6. John Cole. David, the video is hard to watch, but it demonstrates why horse soaring is illegal under federal and state law. It's likely the three men involved won't be sentenced to prison, but can their case put a stop to a practice that's been happening for years? On Tuesday, all three pled guilty in federal court to knowingly transporting and showing soared horses. I hope this sends a message that uh, anyone else participating in this kind of uh, behavior or procedures stop. Stop now. They're not playing. Mays and Abernathy pled guilty to a misdemeanor charge. They could be fined $3,000 and spend up to one year in prison. McConnell pled guilty to felony conspiracy. He also entered false forms and attempted to cover up the sword horses. He may face a fine of $250,000. McConnell could be sentenced up to five years behind bars, but his plea agreement includes a provision that recommends he only get probation. McConnell's attorney, Thomas Greenholtz, declined an on-camera interview, but tells Channel 3 Tuesday's hearing went as expected. People are now are very aware of what's going on. We know what to look for. All you have to do is walk in one of those barns, and your senses will be overwhelmed with the, the smell of the caustic uh, chemicals. Your skin starts to burn. I've been in every barn in Tennessee. My skin has never caught, never caught, never caught, never caught. David Howard is on the board of Shelbyville's Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration. But I'll be honest with you, we'll never get there. There's going to be somebody get by with cheating. I don't think you'll ever end it as long as there's a ribbon to be won and money to be made. For what? For a blue ribbon that costs $1.95? Thompson explained that trainers are sensitive about accusations of animal cruelty. We tried hard to, you know, to keep our image right. And uh, it, uh, our horses have come so far that it's unbelievable. 
Pepsi pulled its sponsorship of, of the national celebration after the video was released. Howard tells me they are discussing whether to begin swabbing horses for chemicals. Sentencing for McConnell, Mays, and Abernathy is September 10th. That's when a district judge will accept or reject their plea agreements. Live in the studio, John Cole Newland, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Jackie McConnell was on probation during our investigation for his past transgressions of the law. This guy was continuing to operate. He's doing it under somebody else's name. And he's abusing these horses in some of the worst ways we've seen in this industry. I've been pretty good. Yeah. We ain't had no complaints, eh? It's appalling, it's cruel, and it's illegal. The longer that I worked the stable, I became more and more aware of just how much pain these horses were in every day. They struggled really hard just to get up from laying down, but many times they were suffering so much they just couldn't. This angered the workers and made them whip the horses violently and even drag them by their heads. There's something really awful at work here. And if those spectators could see the true face of Soren, they'd be running these people out of the business.